The UK has some of the highest dementia rates in the world and now high cholesterol and poor eyesight have been identified as two issues which can increase the chance of developing the disease. Experts say that by tackling these two factors along with 12 others related to health and lifestyle, nearly half of all dementia cases could be delayed, even prevented. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes has more. Dementia has hit Andy's family hard. His dad lived with the disease for years before it claimed his life. Andy also knows that high cholesterol levels run in his family, and that's now been identified as a risk factor for dementia. So he's taking steps to reduce that risk. We can't worry about the things that we can't control. They're just you know, beyond our ability. Um, but I think if you can kind of look at those things, you know, we as a family thinking, make sure we get some exercise, make sure we're connected with our social circles, you know, that we're alert, we stay active, we look after our heart and our cardiovascular. These are all good things to have a healthy long life anyway. So it's not as if we're doing anything that's counterproductive. And as a consequence of all that, we're also minimizing the chance of us, any one of us, you know, getting dementia or Alzheimer's. Mm, that's a good thing for us to chase after. Age and genetics are two of the biggest risk factors for dementia. But there are things we can control, such as smoking, putting on weight or drinking too much. Now researchers have found two more, high cholesterol and uncorrected vision loss, like glaucoma or cataracts. It's thought that nearly half of all dementia cases could be prevented or delayed by tackling health and lifestyle factors throughout our lives. Experts say the UK has some of the highest dementia rates in the world. The latest data shows that in England alone, more than 480,000 people are living with the disease. But as our understanding of dementia grows, so too do the measures we can take to reduce the risk. This research really makes a difference. It shows us that there are things within our control that we can do to reduce our dementia risk. It gives us hope and there are so many opportunities for us to take simple everyday actions that can reduce our dementia risk and reduce the harm and heartbreak of dementia in the future. Dementia was once seen as a disease that was just part and parcel of old age. We now know that's not the case and there are things we can all do to reduce the risk of this terrible illness having an impact on our own families. Dominic Hughes, BBC News. So with us in the studio this morning, Professor Eve Hogavost from Loughborough University and Jess Tobin, who's from Alzheimer's Research UK. Very good morning, morning to both of you. Morning. Professor, maybe we start with you. These two elements that you have been doing work on identifying, this is to do with sight and cholesterol, each one in turn to do with sight. Do, do the connection for us. Well, so... A lot of the vision problems we see in, in Alzheimer's disease, like cataract and diabetic uh, retinopathy, um, share risk factors with Alzheimer's disease, age being one of them, um, high blood sugar, uh, a lack of oxygen perhaps uh, to the eye and the brain. And so this is why this is very important, because what we found in Loughborough is that visual sensitivity very early on, 10 years before the diagnosis, is already apparent, so it shows an increased risk for dementia. So uh, for those people who are not scientifically minded, what you're discovering is if someone leaves eye conditions untreated, that can, have a, that can speed up, possibly, a route to dementia or Alzheimer's? Well, at this point, we don't know whether it's directly causing that. There is a theory called using or losing it, where if you don't have the visual input, your brain might, you know, be affected by, by memory loss as well and, and accelerate uh, the, the Alzheimer's process. But uh, there are various other possibilities uh, as well. Cataract is quite common in uh, people, about one in three people uh, over the age of 65 might have it. Um, and and it's, it's, it carries the same risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. So we don't know whether one causes the other or whether they co-occur together. Do you know what, Jess? I was, I was looking, because these those are just two elements, aren't they? The mm. high cholesterol, um, the, the eyesight, there are something like 12 elements. Um, and I was looking at them and it's all just being healthy. Don't drink too much. Um, drink fewer than 14 units of alcohol a week. Healthy, balanced diet. Maintain a healthy weight. Active, be active, exercise, don't smoke. All the stuff that your doctor 
would tell you. Yeah, that's exactly right, Naga. So what we, uh, what we say is what's good for your heart is good for your brain. So there are now 14 risk factors that we can do either as individuals or as a society to try and prevent us getting dementia. So my question is, mm -hmm. when I said it's all things that a doctor would tell you, we're told this already. So how do you then take a message that we're already being told and turn it into a message that we actually start listening to? Yeah, I don't think pe many people realise that um, So the, the diseases that cause dementia that can actually build, start building up 20 years before symptoms even present. So a lot of people don't kind of acknowledge dementia as an issue until they get a bit older. But what this Lancet report shows is that it's really important that people start taking um, steps in early as midlife. And uh, you're completely right that um, a lot of these uh, steps that we're told to take, that, that we hear them a lot, but... Um, there, there are a lot of overlapping things, so social isolation and, and depression and physical activity. If you make kind of small tweaks to your life, we're not saying you need to completely revamp your life to prevent yourself getting dementia, but making small tweaks can have a big impact on the long term. So when you say like 20 years before, this yes. is when the proteins build up build in the brain. Up. So those are the things that you can identify yeah. with scans once Alzheimer's dementia has kicked in, but yes. there's no way at the moment of finding those out before. No, not at the moment, but there, there is a lot of work that's going on in order to kind of diagnose the disease much earlier. So um, you're right, at the moment, the diagnosis process, uh, you can only diagnose someone once they have significant symptoms. But Alzheimer's Research UK, we're funding a, a big initiative called the Blood Biomarker Project, along with Alzheimer's Society and the NIHR, and that's <clears throat> looking at ways that we can improve early diagnosis. So that's detecting the proteins earlier in the blood. So there is a movement to diagnosing earlier. But, Professor, it is clearly not the case that you or your colleagues are suggesting you can prevent Alzheimer's by lifestyle choices. That would be overstepping the mark, would it? I don't think so. I think, you know, the Lancet report shows that we can prevent about half of uh, the dementia cases uh, by by engaging in these healthy lifestyles. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to get it. It means we reduce the risk. Um, so you could just have, you know, Alzheimer's developing even though you're engaging with all these healthy lifestyles, but you are reducing your risk. Yes, um, that's that's a significant message to get across, mm. isn't it? That yes. The choices you make, as Nag was saying earlier, a lot earlier can have a direct bearing on your health as you get older. Yes. I just think, though, at this moment in time, there are people who smoke. There are people who drink more than 14 units a week. There are people who don't exercise, perhaps, as much as we are told to exercise. They're already making their choices. So I just wonder, and I suppose it's the same question I was pressing to Jess, really, what needs to change? Because people smoke, and even though they're told this is, it increases your risk of cancer, people drink and it increases your risk of... or eat fatty foods, it increases your risk of high cholesterol. What message needs to come through for I people think... to kind of take dementia seriously and change their lifestyles? Because so far there are so many things that people don't do that. I think one of the most important risk factors is um, low levels of education. And we see that a lot of these uh, behaviours that are associated with an increased risk for disease, like smoking, not eating healthy diets, not exercising, drinking too much alcohol, they tend to cluster together. And... The Lancet report also talks, for instance, about lack of um, sleep, anxiety um, and other mental health disorders as risk factors. And I think one, one of the things we need to do, and, and Jess, we just talked about that, about policy, mm -hmm. some of this is a public health message. This is, this is socioeconomic deprivation. Uh, driving this. There's, whenever I give talks about this, there are white, middle-class, educated people asking me how much wine can I drink. <laughs> um, and uh, there are people on the other side of the equation who are far too busy trying to make a living, um, you know, and are far too stressed to even think about needing to give up smoking and drinking because uh, that helps them they think cope with the stresses they're facing. Yeah, it's a really good point, that, actually. It's very good to speak to both of you. Professor Hogerfoss, thank you very much. Uh, Jess Tobin is uh, with Alzheimer's Research. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.